Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this press conference this evening. Um, it is certainly a pleasure to be here for this very worthy initiative and reaching a milestone that we've reached in terms of the Cayman Islands Older Persons Policy. I'd just like to recognize folk at the head table with me. Uh, to my right is Robert Lewis, Director of the Policy Coordination Unit, and to my left is I won't give you her government title, I'll give you her policy title, and that is the chairperson of the steering committee, Ms. Debbie Langston Siblis. And uh, in the audience, we have a number of members of the steering committee, welcome, and also the press, and of course our GIS team. Thank you all for being here. Today, I'm proud to state that on Friday, October 21st, 2016, Cabinet approved the Cayman Islands Older Persons Policy 2016-2035. Cabinet also acknowledged the report of the Legal Subcommittee, authorized drafting instructions for an Older Persons Bill and approved the formation of a, an Implementation Planning Task Force to be chaired and coordinated by the Cabinet Office. This plan is expected to be finalized within four months of the approval period of the policy. This continued work will require a multidisciplinary approach and accordingly members from civil society, the private sector, and government agencies are being appointed to serve on, on the Implementation Planning Task Force to be chaired by the Deputy Director Policy Coordination Unit. As I've stated, the terms of reference for the creation of a steering committee to develop an older person's policy for the Cayman Islands was noted by Cabinet in November 2015. The purpose of this steering committee was to advise the Minister of Community Affairs, Youth and Sports on all matters regarding the development of an older person's policy for the Cayman Islands for a 20-year period, 2016-2035. Under the Cayman Islands Constitution Order 2009, older persons are afforded the same rights and protection of all citizens but unlike the rights and protection of children and persons with disabilities, currently no policies or statutes explicitly address the rights of older persons. The Constitution recognizes that the needs of each and every individual are of equal importance, and the Cayman Islands would ensure re should ensure resources are employed so all its members have an equal opportunity for participation and inclusion. With Cabinet's authorization for drafting instructions, a bill will be brought back to Cabinet for consideration in early 2017. This legislation will create important legal framework or proceedings, actions and decisions concerning older persons to respect their dignity, ensure fair and equitable treatment, and provide protection against any form of unfair discrimination. It will also establish the Older Persons Council, whose functions and responsibilities will be to promote the needs and welfare of older persons, monitor policy implementation, and advocate for legislative reform where necessary. The Council will comprise older persons, civil society stakeholders, and public-private sector representatives. The development of this policy was in keeping with United Nations principles on the rights of older persons to advocate for all older persons who have independence, participation, care, self-fulfillment, to have, sorry, the independence, participation, care, self-fulfillment, and dignity. The policy is also informed by the government's broad outcome number 12, as stated in its 2016-17 strategic policy statement, that a national policy on the elderly was to be developed with accompanying legislation and resources to ensure the rights of elderly are protected and their needs are addressed in the community. Note also that the Implementation Plan for the Public Services Review of the Department of Children and Family Services, Effici Efficiency Number 10, called for the drafting and enacting of enabling legislation for the elderly. The Cayman Islands Older Persons Policy 2016-2035 policy encompasses all aspects of an older person's life, including health, community involvement, legal protection, and much more. The vision we hope to achieve through the policy is to advance the well-being of older persons in the Cayman Islands. The community, including public, private, and civil society, all have a role to play in valuing, respecting, and empowering all older persons to live secure and fulfilling lives. Given recent amendments to the retirement age, 
in the Public Service and Management Law 2016 Personal Amendment Regulation 2016 and the National Pension Amendment Bill 2016, older persons will be recognized as persons who attain 65 years and older. At this time, I will invite the Chair of the Steering Committee and the Legal Subcommittee of the Cayman Islands Older Persons Policy, Mrs. Deborah Webb Siblis, to speak to the justification of the goals and strategies of the policy. Following her statements, the Director of the Policy Coordination Unit, Mr. Robert Lewis, will speak to implementation planning and further steps towards making implementation of the policy sustainable. But just before I turn it over to these two fine folk, I'd just like to say that this has been a labor of love for many people here, and I'm speaking in particular to Debbie on my left and the members of the steering committee who were with her from the beginning. This process, as you will hear from others, has been long going and ongoing, and it's a long time in coming, and I think it's something that the Cayman Islands very, very badly needs. Our older persons, we all know from talking to them, seeing them, hearing about, we know that they are in a, a lot of them are in insecure positions and in, in places where it is really not, not in the best of, uh, not the best of care, not in the best of standards of living, and the security and tenure that you need when you, when you become an older person after having worked and contributing to your society is, is you know, something that should be, should be at a high level. And a society is known by the way it cares for its young and its elderly. And um, I think that this is something that the society has, the Cayman Island Society has badly needed. And we are very proud today to be here at this point which is a step down the road, and we, we have some more to go, but I think it's a significant step, and I just want to pay kudos to all those who work hard, Debbie and her team. Thanks to you guys for the hard work. Thanks to the ministry, and thanks to all those, the, the Cabinet Secretary Office and, and the coordination, Policy Coordination Unit for all the hard work that has gone in to making this day a reality. At, that's, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to, to Debbie. Thank you, Honorable Minister Borden. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In the development of the policy, the steering committee was guided by the previous work that was completed by a multidisciplinary team approach back in 2010 and 2011. We were also informed by the United Nations Principle of Older Persons, our constitution, international legislation and regional policies, local legislation and reports on the care and welfare of older persons. The steering committee also promoted and solicited feedback from a wide cross-section of stakeholders. Input was well represented and received through the collaboration of the Labor Force Survey by the Economics and Statistics Unit via Cabinet-approved Rider Survey on attitudes towards older persons in March 2016. Further, much input was obtained from a stakeholders workshop that was held in July of this year, seven focus group meetings with older persons held in August, and a few weeks ago, we held a follow-up stakeholders meeting. In the held discussions, the identified issues impacting older persons included some of the following. The need for older persons to be recognized as a distinct group requiring attention in human rights legislation and the need for specialized care. For bed-bound and bed-ridden older persons to have access within their homes to health care and supportive services, access to adequate food, water, and shelter, also identified by stakeholders, was that older persons need to have access to continued education and employment opportunities. They also need to be able to benefit from family care in their homes, families, and in the communities. They need to remain integrated in society and have equal opportunities to participate in policies affecting their lives and welfare. And they need to be protected from any form of abuse, exploitation, and much more. So as we work with stakeholders from various venues on these issues, they were provided with opportunities to make recommendations on how to address these challenges. Accordingly, the five goals within this policy reflect feedback 
receive from stakeholders. The policy speaks to rights and entitlements of older persons and for them to have access to adequate food, water, shelter and health care, access to justice and legal services, appropriate continued education and training, community-based care and support services, cultural, recreational and spiritual opportunities to pursue self-fulfillment, safe transportation, to live out their lives with dignity, equality and discrimination, to fight against these things, to have freedom of expression and based on their legal capacity to make decisions about their care and quality of life and remain protected in their homes. In summary, the goals, strategies and aims of this policy focus on addressing and achieving the following. Goal one, speaks to the promotion of independence of older persons in their districts and communities while having access to adequate water, food, shelter, clothing, through the provision of income, family, and community support and self-help. The supportive strategies aim to improve and extend access to the health and social needs of older persons, as well as addressing the need for older persons to remain mobile in their communities and the society. Goal two advocates for older persons to remain integrated in society while participating actively in the formulation and implementation of policy affecting their well-being. The supportive strategies advocate for expansion of opportunities for older persons to engage in national, cultural, and community activities, to remain in the labor force and have opportunities to remain engaged in lifelong learning opportunities. Goal three advocates for older persons to benefit from family and community care and protection while accessing social and legal services to enhance their autonomy, protection, and care. The supportive strategies aim to identify the need to establish a wellness and preventative care approach for older persons and strengthen the culture of family care. Goal four speaks to promoting the need for older persons to pursue opportunities for achieving their full potential while accessing educational, cultural, spiritual and recreational resources. The supportive strategies aim to conduct community needs assessment and identify the barriers hindering older persons accessing services. Goal five hopes to achieve the protection, security and dignity of older persons by addressing the financial, physical and social needs of older persons. The supportive strategies aim to address financial security, family values, safe infrastructure and security for the benefit of older persons. It also aims to address abuse and equitable treatment of older persons. In closing, I extend heartfelt appreciation to all the members of the working group of 2010 to 2011, the 2016 steering committee and the legal subcommittee, as well as the stakeholders who participated in all meetings and stakeholders workshops. On behalf of these committees, I extend appreciation to the Ministry of Community Affairs, Youth and Sports for providing us with the opportunity to develop this policy. At this time, I will invite the Director of the Policy Coordination Unit to speak on the benefits and the need for implementation of this policy and the necessary action plans that will need to be developed so that it can be implemented. Mr. Lewis. Thank you very much, Debbie. Good afternoon, all. You know, it's been said that governments are good at developing policies that end up being shelved. In other words, unsustainable policy. It is hoped that the approaches taken with this policy will disprove this notion. In this regard, I will briefly cover what happened and is expected to happen toward ensuring the policy is implemented. First, as you heard, the policy was developed via partnerships between older persons, civil society, private sector, and government representatives on the steering committee. In other words, the policy was developed by 
stakeholders, not by government per se. This ensures that buy-in by beneficiaries and service providers is at the forefront before the policy is approved by cabinet. I would also like to echo Debbie's thanks to steering committee members, some present here, who accomplished much in such a short time. Second, while being championed by the current administration, the 20 year lifespan of the policy to be supported by legislation spans multiple administrations. So it is anticipated that the policy's vision of advancing the well being of older persons should be important for many years to come, irrespective of who is in office. Third, some policies have been shelved or partly implemented because either there were no follow-up or little implementation planning after the policy was approved. As you heard from the minister, cabinet approved implementation planning to be carried out by partnerships between key stakeholders on a task force. The implementation plan will identify necessary actions to affect strategic aims, lead entities for actions, including partnerships where necessary, timelines, resources, targets, and progress or success indicators. The implementation plan is to be supported by a monitoring plan. Now, all of the above may sound good, but as you know, it's been said that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So, this begs the question, what else can help to make a difference? Which leads to the fourth point, a watchdog, legally empowered to monitor policy implementation and aid holding policy implementers accountable. This watchdog will be the Older Persons Council, as mentioned, which is expected to be cemented in law thereby legitimizing its role as a champion for advancing the well-being of older persons. The Council will also have the authority, informed by its monitoring role, to evaluate impl implementation and recommend changes if necessary. Finally, the Council is expected to play a key role educating the public on the benefits of addressing challenges faced by older persons toward a more just and healthy society. Lastly, advancing from policy to legislation should ensure progress towards attaining the policy's vision, goals, strategies, and aims. To summarize, needless to say, policy sustainability, especially for a national policy such as this one, is not by accident. It can only happen through sustained championing, effort, monitoring, evaluating, changing as necessary, and most important, partnership among older persons, civil society, private sector, and government stakeholders. Thank you. Okay, um, that's the written bits. Anyone have any questions from the press? For any of us, there. we'll do our best to answer what we can. Hi, uh, Charles Duncan with the Compass. Um, so uh, one thing you hear about a lot in the States is, is the idea of aging in place. And I'm wondering if, if you can talk a little bit about that idea here and what some of the barriers are and right, where you see some of the solutions. The policy in developing the goal and strategies to address the issue of care, we have talked about the benefits of older persons aging in place and the supportive services that will need to be identified to ensure that that is made possible. Because we realize that 
some older persons will do a lot better if they were to remain in their home known environment than having to be placed into a residential um, caring facility for older persons. So right now we do not have those type of resources available in regards to services. But we are hoping as we look at implementing the necessary objectives and, and action plans to address the strategies that we have identified in the policy that we will be able to identify what resources we will need to advocate for, whether it's public or private, um, to be put in place to help those persons who would prefer to remain in their homes as they age. And I, I think to go along with that, it's something that we need in Cayman that we don't have at the moment is like adult daycare, uh, where th those folk who wish to remain at home, uh, they, they still have an outlet in that they're not, they're not cooped up as it were all day long and they're, st they're still able to contribute, their minds are sharp, they have skills and traditions that they can pass on to our younger people, and, and, and just socializing with their peers. It's very, very important, I think, to, for their minds to stay healthy, because if you, a healthy mind usually means a healthy body. And uh, I, I think that that's something that we, we would encourage, it's not necessarily something that government has to do, but it can be a private initi initiative that uh, you, you, go, you go to the States again and you see, you see adult daycare centers, um, and just came back from somewhere where I was, and you know they're all over the place there. So, I would I would certainly like to see us lean towards that as well. Well, right now we have one or two because I know the Pines um, offer a daycare right. Right. service, um, but I I guess what Minister Bodden is making reference so reference to is um, at least the option where if they can't afford to pay. Yeah. but they need the, f the service mm -hmm. that will be made available. Yes. Hi there, Wendy here from Cayman News Service. Um, do you have any idea what kind of resources you're going to be looking at down the line in terms of m a monetary figure? I mean, obviously, you can put you know, discriminatory policy, anti-discriminatory policies in place. You can make legislation. You do all those things for the, the wish list, as it were. But at the end of the day, it's going to have to be funded. We're looking at an aging population. Caymanians are having less children, like everywhere, all developed countries, and the, the population's getting older. And, and generally, these services are going to be, one assumes, required by those that are more vulnerable and less well off, because obviously those that are on higher pensions are going to be able to access these things via the private sector. Have you, as a minister at this point, got any figures in your mind as to how you will need to increase your annual budget <coughs> at Community Affairs to cover the needs of our aging population? Uh, thanks, Wendy. No, we don't at this point to be quite blunt, but uh, that I think we'll, we'll have a better handle on that through, through the, the next few months with the implementation uh, phase, because then w that they will focus more, that group, will, that task force will focus more on, on what it will take to, to make all this happen, and, and we should have a better handle budget-wise at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Minister Bodden, uh, Mario Gray here, K-Man 27. You know, so much was said so far with the elections coming up about winning over the millennial vote, you know, winning over the young people uh, into this upcoming election. How much of this policy is stringent upon winning over, you know, the elderly um, to be a part of the electoral process? <laughs> Mario, that's a good question. Uh, what I will say to that is that those young people will be old one day if they're lucky, and therefore they have a vested interest in making sure that we have something like this in place and that th they play their part in, in making it happen and, and taking care of the older folk in this community and respecting them. But, uh, you know, this, this hasn't been done uh, for any, uh, and I know you don't mean that, this, any political reason. This is purely something that has been in the works and, and well overdue and uh, just happy that when I, last year when I said uh, after being in the ministry only, I think about six months then or just over six months, I said to the chief officer then, you know, we, this is something I want to see in place within a year for this October for Older Persons Month. And uh, the team was reassembled and uh, I think hurriedly got on with the job and, and we, we have a good, good, good uh, product at the end of the day. Uh, a lot of pages of, of information and, and hard work went into this. But uh, our, our young people, those, those who are really in touch with, with what's going on and, and, and you know, in touch with, with government and, and um, 
paying attention to to their social responsibility, I think we'll also welcome this and we'll see it as a as a responsible society, as a responsible government. We all have aging family members and we like to make reference to back in the good old days in Cayman when we had a, we had to respect our elders. Um, it was part of growing up, it was part of our culture, it was part of our values. And with the hope of this policy and, and our ability and our willingness to achieve the vision of advancing the well-being of older persons, that as a society we will stop and relook at how are we treating our older persons today when we speak to the fact of they help to build our country, our society, we need to ask ourselves, what are we giving back to them as our appreciation for what work they have done? And as we worked on developing the policy, we tried to embrace all aspects of the Caymanian life um, for all those who reside here in the Cayman Islands. For us to be appreciative of the fact that older persons, regardless of their ages, whether they're 65, 80, 90, or 100, they are still members of our society. And therefore, we owe it to them as human beings to respect their dignity, to ensure that their integrity is maintained. Because whenever they leave this earth, and regardless of our age, we should be mindful of the fact that whenever we do leave this earth, that we need to be mindful now of what message, what legacy do I want to leave behind for the next generation to embrace and build on. So this policy is with the hope of building on what was already there in regards to what needs to be done to ensure that older persons are respected that our commitment to honor them remains intact. What I'd like to add to that as well is that I think I can speak for just about everyone in this room uh, who grew up in Cayman at the time when certainly 50, 60 years ago, 40, 60, 50, 60 years ago, we grew up in a Cayman that was very small, very close-knit, and our older folk were all part of the family unit and well respected and well looked after. And now we find ourselves in a, in a Cayman that has exploded since the 70s in terms of population growth and foreign influence, um, a lot of people working here. And we, we, we certainly have a, a much different society than what we had before. And we, we now see the family unit no, no longer necessarily as close as it used to be. You, you find that, that, that kids move on and they get their own families and you, you can easily find that that grandmother or great grandmother is living alone. You never, you never found that back then. And th that, that's why it's so important to have, to have protections for those, for those folk because you know, they, you got, God forbid you got young people that will pass them and, and don't have a clue and don't have any respect for who they are. And they, there needs to be, they, they are predators in our society. That, 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 that spot these folk out and go after their, their property and go after their possessions and, and you know, uh, as you'd say, friend them up and then move on with the stuff. That, 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 is, uh, that is very wrong because who, who's looking after that person all along when for you to just come and just find a way to, to swindle them and, and, and their family out of whatever they have? Um, there, there's abuse of, of our older people. Um, there, there's... There's rumors of, of, of people being, you know, beaten and uh, neglected, not well cared, not clean, not fed. All, all that, I mean, th this stuff happens all around us. Let, let's not fool ourselves about it. So it's very, very important. The, 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 the committee, I think, did a fantastic job <coughs> in addressing many of these issues by speaking to the, to the older folk themselves <coughs> and all of the vested stakeholders who, who deal with our older folk. And, uh, 
you know, we still learn of, of more and more as we go along each day. And, um, you know, when I, I'm, I have the privilege of being minister uh, in charge of community affairs and, and certainly have a lot of functions and part in interactions with our older folk. Let me tell you, we have, we have some of the most wonderful older people in, in these Cayman Islands, and it is a pleasure to be around them and to, to, just, to just sit and absorb and, and, and have fun with them. And, you know, they, 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 all they want to know is that they feel that they're valued, that they're respected, that they're honored. And I, I think as a community, it is something that it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we do it. And whatever we can do in that regard and whatever legislation has to piggyback on this to make it happen, should happen quickly and, and, and God's willing if I'm around it, it will. Uh, Minister, I just wanted to follow up on that, what you talked about abuse and it, it's mentioned in the policy document. I've not had a chance to read it at length yet, but what kind of evidence did you collect during this, the, the process part? Um, or what do you have on records that shows us what kind of levels of abuse we're, we're talking about and what kinds of abuse? Because the minister spoke about different things, like people being conned, you know, by common, and then there's the whole neglect or physical abuse. So I just wondered what you learned during that process. And speaking with the stakeholders, especially the older persons during the, the district meetings um, that we held in August, they spoke of financial abuse, for example, where older persons who are recipients of the 550 per month uh, through poor relief, they don't really get to enjoy that 550 as, as little as it may sound um, due to the cost of living in Cayman, you know, living off of 550 a month. There are persons who are taking advantage of older persons with that 550. So for example, they may, the older persons may only be able to get a small amount out of that 550. For example, $200 to live off of. And with that, they're expected to buy their groceries, pay for their medication if they need to. And they have to, at times, juggle and make a decision, a hard decision as to how they are going to spend that money. We don't have um, statistical data to show how many persons, but I know within D the Department of Children and Family Services, in the past years, um, complaints were made. The director then, uh, Mrs. LeCloy, had to make a decision to have the case investigated to find out whether or not the allegations of misuse of the money um, was actually happening. In most cases, it was. So attention had to be made as to how can this older person who needs that 550 be able to benefit from the money. There are other instances of um, older persons are being physically abused in their homes. and due to the fact that there's no legislation to investigate those type of allegations, yes, the police have a certain role to play based on what is in the penal code to guide them by for alleged criminal activities. But similar to what exists for the children's law, where um, mandatory reporting is made, investigation must take place within 24 hours. There's nothing available for older persons at this point in time. And one of the things that we will be advocating for as we look at the implementation plan is to ensure that similar guidelines and processes are in place to investigate any aspect of uh, reported abuse of older persons. There's also the form of exploitation. Um, whatever form of abuse that one can imagine um, takes place with a child. It also takes place with an older person. Sorry, can I just follow up on that? At the very beginning, you talked about them not getting their full 550. Can you explain what, what's happening to the money? They're taking it. In Who? most instances, in most it? instances, <laughs> um, 
a relative, can be a relative. maybe assigned yeah. to the bank account. Mm -hmm. And that relative has, um, is in charge of that bank account. Or there were other instances that we were aware of um, some years ago um, through the Department of Children and Family Services that relatives or other persons were taking or accompanying the older persons at the bank to do a withdrawal. And once that withdrawal was done, the older person may or may not have benefited from the money. So it's those types of examples that I can speak of that were actual cases reported to the Department of Children and Family Services um, in recent times. that put in a particular thing, you know, like an elderly person being robbed by their family member. What are we looking at in terms of mandatory sentencing for this sort of crime? I'm not sure. That's for the like penal if code. Like if it was supposed to push through, of course, like when, when the final touches are added to the policy, what are we looking at? Is there any idea? No, we, we won't be able to say that. No. Um, that would be um, addressed in the legislation okay. um, in consultation with the existing penal code. Suffice it to say that there will be penalties for that type of behavior. Anything else? Are we good? I think there's a there's a lot of information for you guys to go through, so you won't you won't have a lack of info. Okay, well. Sorry, if I may say. Um, the policy itself is about 33 pages, but the additional pages, we found it necessary to include the feedback we received from the stakeholders workshop and the district meetings um, that we held with the older persons so that the reader of whoever's reading the policy will have a greater appreciation for what came out of those discussions and to also be able to analyze how we were able to address um, those issues in the policy itself when we looked at the, the five goals and the accompanying strategies. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all very much. And uh, we look forward to some good publicity on this. And certainly we look forward to continuing the development of getting the teeth to go along with this, this policy. And we'll be talking about the policy through the rest of the week on the media as well. So thank you all for coming, and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you.